Good evening and a very warm welcome to the Grassroots Weekender show. Day three, Sunday. Hope you had a great weekend. Hope it's been unbelievable. I know the weather hasn't been too good, but hey ho, what more could we say? We've had fantastic weather over the last three months. But now the coaching's back. Disastrous. Imagine if grassroots football has returned. Dear me, where would we be now? We'd be screaming, wouldn't we? Games cancelled, what's going on here? It's been raining, the pitches are flooded, can't get a game in. That's the way grassroots football works, unfortunately. Anyway, it's been the lockdown. We're still getting on with things. Hopefully, you're safe and well, and you're back in work. And hopefully, as you say, the Premier League will be on top of us before we know it. Hope you're enjoying the Bundesliga. It's giving us some ideas what we can be doing, how we can get the crowds going at home. I did say on a post the other day, are we going to have big screens in the garden? I should imagine so, unless the heavens open, but you see all the canvases and all the marquees and everything all set up. Because the lads out there and lasses just can't wait for the Premier League to start up yet again. Can't myself, to be honest. I can't. You know, what is going to be um, the downfalls, the pitfalls, what are going to be the exciting times, what are we going to be looking at, what's the reports going to be like on social media, everyone slating teams, everyone having a go. Well, let's, let's see, just let's see what happens when we kick off the big season. And we know there's transfers already being done, isn't there? I'm surprised, really, to be honest, because I thought a lot of players would be thinking, mm, I'm not going there just yet. Not until the lockdown is finished, not until COVID-19 is clear. But players seem to want a transfer, whether it's going to be coming over, it remains to be seen because of the flights, because of what's going on. Flights, oh, don't get me mad I'm on, on flights. Just like yourselves out there, I was supposed to be in Cyprus. It would have been day two in Cyprus for me. Would have been sun it, would have been going out, getting some. Oh, Cypria food, going to restaurants, massive steaks, enjoyable steaks. And I know people who have been to Cyprus and Vitaras know what I'm talking about. Free Tree Bay, unbelievable. The best waters you'll ever find. But they've got it all to themselves. So all the Cypriots will be loving it, thinking no, no holiday makers. We have the beach to ourselves. They're going to have a time of their lives. And I'm just sitting there thinking, reminiscing. And it could have been me. But it's not, unfortunately. You've just got to get on with it. But you've got me. You've got me extra now. I'm going to be here throughout the June, whereas I would have been away for three weeks. And you may have seen in front of me, Mal, what's that? What are they there? Don't Cross the Line has been going since 2003. We're a not-for-profit organisation. Anyone who doesn't know us, it's all about grassroots football. It's all about what we do on the touchline. We're a not-for-profit organisation, a community interest company which is the next best thing to the charity so it's all voluntary what we're doing here as well and this yes cap in hand we go try and raise money any businesses out there would like to get involved with us and say do you know what Mal we'd love to sponsor you the work you do in grassroots football for don't cross the line you need a few Bob because we have to do lottery grants it's hard work believe me trying to get in these pennies to try and keep everything going to try and get our guests in try and talk about grassroots football, try and keep our referees, junior referees, senior referees, experienced referees within the game. This is what we do. Hard work, but do you know what? We really, really enjoy it. And we haven't been going for nearly 18 years for nothing. That's how long we've been go going for successful. We've got all governing bodies on, on board with us. We don't ask them for anything. We don't get anything. We just get the logos. We just get the support. Doing a great job. That's what it is. But well, if you look at these in front of me, I'm bragging a little bit. Why not? Why shouldn't I brag a little bit? I should have a photograph, part of cut out of Prince William, His Royal Highness Prince William, because I did meet him in 2003. Fantastic. And you'll see the trophy. I'll just grab that trophy, if you don't mind. See me? It's a heavy trophy. I've got to make sure that I don't be knocking anything over. That was me on stage at Wembley Stadium, Chelsea versus Portsmouth. I was invited to the game, loads of food, loads of drink, but you know what, I was that nervous, I hardly touched any of it, because I was in a trance. And my honest opinion, if you've ever been there, I was the first ever winner of the Bobby War 
Bobby Moore Award, and um, it was presented to him by His Royal Highness Prince William. Stephanie Moore, Bobby Moore's widow, she was there as well. It was just, honestly, it was unbelievable, and the nerves when I was stood on that stage, because there was a lot of celebrities there. Eamon, Eamon, oh, I forgot his name. <laughs> Eamon, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Everyone knows who I'm talking about. I'll come to me in a minute. Big Eamon, massive. Anyway, the Pill County FA, Brian Hardwick, they were all there. There was a lot of guests and a lot of personalities that I've I, I met and I saw there. I was mixing with the best. I, I don't know whether it's, I'm, I'm cut out for it. I don't think I am. I'm a local lad and I just like to get in amongst everyone in grassroots football. I'm just an everyday lad who gets on with, as I say, working with people and I think anyone who knows me knows what I'm talking about. But the, the, um, the first ever one that I did win was this one and I was nominated to, um, and I, you might have seen the photographs of me on, online. It was the Barclays Grassroots and Football Award and do you know what, free kicks champion, and you see the champagne, it's been there since 2004. I don't know how long champagne lasts, but you know what, one day I'll crack it open. If it's flat, it's flat. But I doubt it, because it's not Barclays. And you see this, I'm just, I just want that one out. Yeah, solid silver, there you go, medal. And I was awarded that at Goodison Park. And Dave Pommet, who used to work at Everton Football Club, nominates me in the community. Do you know what, absolutely scholar, gentleman, what a, a guy. That man is in a massive write-up and I knew nothing about it. And that came from the Pool County FA as well. Thank you very much. And you see the one behind me, that was um, this one. is the Safeguarding Stars. Um, just bring that a little bit closer to you here so you can have a little look at that. That's the Safeguarding, the NSPCC. And that was awarded to me in on the 5th of October 2016. Child Protection in Sport Unit, Safeguarding Stars. And you know what? It's a, I was privileged um, to get hold of that as well. And that was back at Wembley Stadium. There was no game on this time. So, um, whoops, there was no game on, as I say, this time. But we were there, got involved with it. It was lovely to meet a lot of people as well. And everything in the community were there as well. And do you know what? I, I just, I'm just a, over the moon as to what I've done. There's other awards there, the Pool Echo I had a, a nice lime of beer badge there as well. I didn't, I don't wear that obviously. I put that in my drawer with other awards, and it's not sort of. I'm trying to get as many out as I can in the studio so people can see when they come up uh, just for the work we've done. And I'm not saying I deserve it. No, these come out of the blue. I was nominated, and I appreciate everyone and thank everyone. And as you know, McDonald's Awards are coming up now with the Bobby Moore Awards, and they've had the biggest, the FA have had the biggest ever input for people nominating which is fantastic you know because to get up there to get on that stage if you've been there you've done it and you've received one of them honestly it is frightening that that to me was it was and you wouldn't believe i was stuck for words yes i was stuck for words but as i say i do a lot to help out the referees keep the referees within the game and we have our volunteers as well i have to thank all our volunteers as well we were there, stood by me, side by side, week in, week out. You know, it's all about them, it's all about us, it's all about don't cross the line. And I accept it for don't cross the line. I don't accept it for myself because I enjoy, enjoy doing what I'm doing. I'd rather have loads and loads of funding to try and bring back into the community as we do, trying to get the kids, young commentators, trying to get guests in to talk about their football experiences, get managers in, what they're doing now, give credit to everyone who's fundraising, helping out the kids. That's what we're trying to do with Don't Cross the Line and that's all we're trying to do. But most of all, we try and keep our referees within the game because they take some abuse and if you're being a football manager or even a parent or a committee member, you know what I am talking about. It's unfair, many of them are young kids, they're under 18, they start at 14 years of age and I've been given a post of a mentor from Liverpool County FA, so I'll mix in with the young and experienced referees and we talk, when the games were on that is, we talk, you could say we talk a great game, it's all about keeping the referees within the game, meeting the referees and making sure that they're comfortable and new parents and new supporters out there who are very irate and very abusive, you can do without that because I hope now the lockdowns, well has it made a difference, I'm not too sure, you know, respect what goes on within the communities 
I was looking at posts there, all postcodes, there was no postcodes, no segregation. It was brilliant to see the whole country was coming together as one. Whether it's separating again now because the lockdown has been eased, I can see different things, I can see arguments, I can hear arguments, I can see people, the way they've changed the attitudes. Have we unleashed a new breed of animals, to be honest, because things are going on in those streets, excuse me, out there that we could do without. I just want to see all postcodes coming together, if it's possible, if that is possible, you know, because it's great to work together and get on together, and there's a lot of upset out there within our communities. And you know, when these awards come to me, you know, I think of everyone in the community who's better than me, people who are getting recognized, who don't get recognized, and I've got to thank the FA for putting those awards on with McDonald's, and good luck to him. I was the first ever Bobby Moore winner, and that was, as I say, I, I was awestruck. When I was getting that award, I was stood on the stage, and I was ushered by all kinds of FA representatives, gorgeous girls, absolutely fantastic. They were, you know, I was, oh, it was chaperones everywhere. And I was watching a big screen, it was just like this, looking there on my wall. And I was stood on the stage and I was waiting for a call and what I was told what to do and what not to do. And I was looking and I was watching Bobby Moore in action. And I was like this, I was in awe of Bobby Moore. And I'm saying to myself, I, I've just, the first winner of his award, dear me. And as I was looking and, and watching and his movements, I'm getting calls. And the next thing, I was shoved in the back to move forward. I didn't know. I wasn't. And I'm all to me. And then I go on the stage. And the most embarrassing moment was when you get ushered around and you know, I stand there. And I stood back and I stood on Stephanie Moore's foot. Stephanie, I apologise. I apologise. I'm so, so sorry. And I did on the day as well. And she said, don't worry. She's lovely. Unbelievable. And when I went to the awards um, last season, to have a little look at what was going on. You wouldn't believe, when I went to watch the match, Liverpool-Manchester City, I was sat next to Stephanie Moore, and she looked at me and she went, where do I know you from? And then we got to it. It was one of those, it was brilliant. And you know what? My heart sank yet again, because it brought back a lot of memories. And if you're lucky enough to get one of these awards, treasure it, you've seen it, and treasure in mine. I won't even open the champagne, I just keep it, for myself and to let people see what you can achieve. I don't want to go out there and achieve these things. I just want to carry on doing the way. I like to protect the referees at that same moment because they are the targets when I go out there because the targets of abuse, aggressive behaviour and you can see bullying and racist comments. Lucky enough, touch wood, racist comments I have not really witnessed in grassroots football in all my years. Although I hear it does go on, I'm lucky enough to say, not without being, not on my patch, not on any patch that have visitors, even lost our call Sheffield. I, I, do you know people are oh, they're, they're trying to let, we do need the awareness, we all know what's going on. We need the awareness, we keep need to put in there, and that is why I come up with the poem, and I put those words in, and I want them forever set out, which is don't be a bully, be a friend, don't be a racist, that won't mend. Don't be abusive or aggressive. To show respect is more impressive. And that goes all around. And I just hope every community takes that on board because of what I'm seeing on TV, what I'm seeing on social media, it is sickening as to see we come out of a lockdown and we come in to a world of mayhem. It's upsetting and it just gives me more inspiration to go out and when the football starts again and do something within the communities. And there's so many lovely people out there that I'm watching food banks, everyone within the communities delivering hampers, get, making sure people are all safe and well. It's great and that is what I'm saying about no segregation in both codes. Keep them all together, keep them as one, keep communities, build communities as one. We're all human beings, let's act as one. And as I say, when we go out and the football starts again, please, let's protect our referees because as I say, they are the target. And if they get affected, it's the kids who get affected. Because if we've got irate parents and spectators shouting verbal abuse on and off the field of play, then it's the kids, yes, the kids who are listening, watching mum and dad, and inside of them, we were all kids once, 
and we all know what the feeling was like. If you're getting support, you'll love it. You want to try your hardest. You want that support. You'll remember that for the rest of your life. But what you'll also remember for the rest of your life is if you see any violence on a touchline in the street, anywhere, it sticks in your mind. That will always stick in a child's mind and they'll grow up with that. Something that really is bad sticks with them forever. And don't forget, you know, part of it, you know, uh, mums and dads, parents splitting up, that is hard for them, that sticks in the mind. So what I'm trying to say to you, I do that to protect the children on the field of play because the referees are there as the targets, they're there as the centre of abuse. We need to stop that. If we can stop that, the kids can get on and enjoy the football, they can develop their skills, the referees can develop their skills. We need to be have our mentors out, talking to the referees, making sure they're okay, and we need to approach managers. Now, being made a mentor by Liverpool County FA, thank you very much, it made me closer to managers and parents and the kids because you're bringing everyone together. So something was said to an, by an Irish parent, spectator, manager, towards the referee. We dealt with it, we made sure the referee was okay, talked to the referee, talked to the parents, talked to the manager, and brought them together. And you may have seen one of my shows not too long ago, where we brought in a, a manager who was verbally abusive with another parent, or with a parent, and it, it, it got his back up, and he'd never ever do that again. And he came in to talk about it, and that is what I call bringing people together, making a difference, not just in the communities, on the touchlines. There's thousands and thousands upon thousands playing football. It's the biggest sport in the world, and that is what brings people together. And this is what we were hoping the Premier League would do, bring the games back together, because you don't know how much that could bring the, our lives back. You know, make a difference, because football is many people's lives and they can't live without it. And when it returns, whether there's a crowd there or not, some sort of atmosphere, at least the football is there, and at least there'll be no violence on the terraces. That is one thing that we can hold our hands up and say, thankfully, but we were getting the grip of that, because I believe we've got the best police force in the world, in the UK, and I still do. And they know how to segregate, keep fans apart, bring them together, this is the way it is, and you know what, this is why I'm saying empty stadiums, let's play at our own grounds, not neutral grounds, because the police force can tackle any sort of movement on and off the field of play. They do it in the ground with 50, 60,000. If they've got 1,000 people congregating out of the ground, that's not a problem for our police. That's my honest opinion, but let's just see what will happen. No neutral ground, please. Let's get on with the games and let's enjoy the Premier League when it does start. Well, there you go. I thought I'd give you an insight into the work that we do, voluntary work. And as I say, if there's any businesses out there or anyone wants to help us fundraise, please, please, you know, because we've got this studio now and it does cost rent and we've got to try and raise money to pay the rent, bring people in, as I say, the guests, bring kids in, young commentators, get them together. Well, we're working closely with Condor Online Radio. They're going to help us out, young commentators. Let's get them together. Let's try and do things and let's make some a difference and give the kids a voice as well. That is a massive difference, especially with podcasting, especially with editing, camera work, working out what they can do on podcasting. It's great for the kids. And who knows, we can't work out with the adults who have some learning difficulties or people who can't afford it. We might be able to bring them in as well because I guarantee you there's one or two adults out there who would love to do what I'm doing and get involved. So if you're interested in it, give us a little email, mal at johntextline.com. Add me as a friend on Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, all the social network sites. I say this day in, day out, week in, week out, especially on the grassroots podcast weekend the show. Okay, there we go. We've come to the end of another show. Thank you very much for our listeners, our watchers on DXTL from the Touchlands on YouTube. Please, please share it, like it, get in touch with me if you want to get involved with Don't Cross the Line. We have young ambassadors like Olivia Henderson, Liv, she likes to be known as, massive, brilliant young referee who's a young ambassador for us and a young commentator as well and young presenter. We hope to have her on the show very, very soon indeed, but obviously they've got to get back to school first, haven't they? Anyway, there we go. We come to the end of another show. Thank you very much for tuning in to us, watching us. We'll be back again next Friday. 
So if we sell my lane all the team here, the grassroots show, don't cross the line, respect programme, have a great evening, be safe, good night, God bless, see you next Friday.